Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, you're getting the window all cloudy with your nose. Mm, still light out. I can see. Throw me that ball of wool. That'll oh. keep you from rubbing up the window. You don't need excuses for me to throw you a ball of wool, Miss Brown. Here, catch. Claudia, you hit me on the nose. Perfect aim. Sorry, Mama. Fine manners, you poor old mother. <laughs> Go on, stare out of that window if you like. It won't bring David home any sooner. Oh, he'll be home sooner today anyway. He said he'd be early. He has a meeting or something. Well, Mama, look. Look at what? Look out the window at those trees. Come here, come here, quick. Don't tell me the trees are marching off. What's the hurry? Mama, come on. I want you to look at something. I, I think I see something on one of our trees. Branches, no doubt. Honestly, I'm serious. Look now, Mommy, see... Straight, straight ahead of you. See that stuff high up on the oaks, way down by the brook, mm -hmm. see? Well, it's hanging like, like garlands or something. You have eyes like a hawk. Do you see it? Of course I see it. Then you have eyes like a hawk, too. Mama, it's parasites. Nonsense. Those garland-like things? Fungus or, or, or parasites or something. You don't even know what a parasite is. Certainly I do. I'm a parasite. You? Parasite is something that lives off of a something else without doing anything to help. Our trees out there have parasites, like David has me. Oh, gosh, David's going to be terribly upset. He knows about you. You're nothing new. No, but the trees are. In the first place, we're not for sure whether they're diseased or not. Maybe you're just seeing things. I'm seeing things, all right, and I don't like what I'm seeing. That's disease out there, Mom. Any fool could recognize that. No need for you to be so modest. Oh, poor David. The first time we had the tree surgeon come over, David went around looking as if he'd been to a funeral. And don't say he'll be hardened this time. Losing a tree is not the sort of thing an honest-to-goodness man gets hardened to. There's something very human about a tree you own. I hate to part with a single one of them. You hate to part with anything. Why should I? Life's bad enough, people say. Certainly funny. I didn't notice that business before. Honestly, Mommy, you can't even trust a tree. Can't rest easily with nature any more than with people, can you? I think you've been very lucky so far with both. Still, it's not one thing, it's another. Always something. Last spring after the tree surgeon came, I thought we wouldn't have any more trouble, but I guess trees have to go through measles and chicken pox and mumps and rheumatism like everybody else. You make it sound so attractive. Well, it isn't. Let's face it. It isn't. Say, Mama, maybe maybe I, I should call the tree surgeon before David comes back. What would be the point of that? Well, I'd love David not to have to know. It's just before Christmas. No time of year to lose a tree, Mama. No time even. Especially these old oaks worth thousands. So you better let David decide. Yep, guess so. And don't put it off. The sooner you have the condition attended to, the better off it'll be. Mm -hmm. Throw me that crochet needle. I knew it. What? Throw me that crochet needle. Had that look in your eye. <laughs> Here you are. Ooh, wish David had come home. Can't you wait to tell him the bad news? There are other things I can't wait to tell him. Well, except for trees, everything's pretty perfect, so... Guess I better not complain. I should say you better not. <laughs> Guess he's supposed to discuss the schoolhouse with George Reynolds at five o'clock. Mama, I think I hear a car. You do? David, I bet you. You act as if you haven't seen him for a month. Every time he comes home, it feels like a month. Mom, is it going to be like this always? If David can stand you, it should be. If it isn't, I'll wring your neck. That's my mama. Well, I think I'll go out and meet him. Claudia, put on your coat. It's warm today, Mama. Well, not warm enough to go out in a sweater and a skirt. David! Yoo-hoo! David! Well, if it ain't the missus. So you did get home early. Any objections? Millions of them, but none of them important. Why don't you have your coat on? Oh, because I didn't want you to have to wait one second longer than necessary before I allow you to kiss me. Well, you get back in the house, you little fool. Is that all you have to say to me? You heard me. Get on back in the house. I heard you. I'm getting... Don't rush me. Well, now we're in. Say hello. Hello. 
Hello. Good to be home? Not bad. Haven't been home on the range in daylight for days. Mm, that's true. Leave in the morning before sunrise, you come home at night after sunset. I think it's awful. Well, awful or not, that's the way it is. Oh, now. hello, David. What do you mean by letting your daughter go outside without her coat, Mrs. Brown? What can a poor old mother do? Mm, not much, I admit. It is awful, isn't it, Mama, the way David lives? Uh, what's so awful about it? Leaving in the morning when it's dark and coming home at night when it's dark, mm. it is the nuts. Will you please tell your daughter, Mrs. Brown, I'm not <laughs> to be pitied. At least not for what she's pitying me. That was a nasty crack. Mama, don't answer him. I refuse to meddle. David, sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. Ah, don't get up. I think I'll go outside and have a look around the place. I can always have the tea after dark. Fritz went down to the village. So? So? Can't look around without him. So? So? If you don't want to be alone? I don't mind coming along. You don't, eh? No, not a bit, do you? No, not a bit. Let's go. Good. I don't have much time. Don't you want to come along with us too, Mama? I should say not. Walk around your precious farm. I'd rather sit here by the fire and knit, thank you. Mom, all you'll have for company beside the fire is Shakespeare, and he's asleep. That cat sleeping is all the company I want. She doesn't love us, David. Well, in that case, we don't love her. We'll leave your aging mother to warm her toes in quiet comfort. I think for Christmas we'll get her a lavender shawl to put around her shoulders. <laughs> I prefer gray. You put on your coat, Mrs. Norton. Mm. No more nonsense out of you. Hey, where are the dogs? Oh, up around the barn, I suppose. That's where they were a little while ago. Oh, it's so nice having two Danes. They stop picking on Mama. I want to get some more tobacco. I'll be down in a second. Change your shoes while you're upstairs. What for? Put on heavier ones. Mind your own business. Oh, Mama, he's so blissful. I hate telling him about those trees. I know. He's so proud of the place. Then he talks of going out and walking over his land. It looks all different. If it were the only thing in, in life that were at all important the way a man should feel about his land. Well, I imagine that was the way all men felt in the days when land was the most important thing. It still is to many men. It's a shame there's always something that isn't all completely right. Well, it'd get pretty dull if everything were perfect all the time. No, I don't think it would. Besides, it's not just the tree, it's it's the money, you the know. Money? Yeah. You've turned into a walking budget since you've married. Well, I just know the price of money now, that's all. I'll have you know the sentiment came first and the money second. Mm, you don't convince me. Well, come on, let's go. Oh, golly, you look so outdoorsy in that old wool shirt. You know, you're really very handsome, David. Yes, I know. Goodbye, Grandma. At last, Grandma shall have some solitude. <sighs> Here feels good. Mm-hmm. Place looks pretty nice. Even in the winter, doesn't it? David, mm? you know, all that glitters is not gold. What was that? Oh, nothing. Uh, let's walk down to the brook. How'd you like? I would like fine. You know, I was walking out here this morning with the dogs. There, there are an awful lot of, of trees beyond the brook, David. You know, there, there are too, too many, perhaps. Some of our best and oldest oaks grow out this way. You like old oaks best? No, there's nothing that compares with them. I'd hate to lose even one. But if you have to, you have to. It's life, isn't it? Isn't it what? Well, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, darling, please don't get wild at what I'm going to say. Now, why should I get wild? Because people have been known to get wild at things other people say that, that, that people don't like. Well, of all the crazy I'm not ideas. criticizing, but just don't get wild. Well, you tell me what you want to tell me, and I'll act any way I want to. Now, all what's right. with the oaks? How do you know it was with the oaks I had to tell you? Any idiot would have known you're so subtle. David, we are going to lose some oak trees. We're going to what? Lose some oak trees. You heard me. They're, they're sick. Who says? I says. Since when are they sick? I don't know. I only noticed before you came home. Well, what'd you see? Well, you'll see for yourself in a minute. It's parasites or fungus or something. Where? On top, hanging on the branches. Oh, darling, I hated to tell you. I, I know how you feel about trees, and I hated the tree surgeon when he came. Made us feel as if our farm were nothing but a sick hospital. Oh, mercy. Well, it may not be as bad as you think. It's worse. Anyway, it looks worse. All that stuff hanging like garlands on the branches. I was just telling Mommy, you can't even depend on an oak tree not to give you any trouble. Well, whatever it is, maybe you've noticed it in time, and... We'll be able to save the tree. Maybe. 
Oh, I'd love it when you sound like a doctor. You, you'd have made a wonderful doctor, David. Your lady patients would have been sick all the time. I, I take it that is supposed to be a personal compliment. An enormously personal compliment. Now, where are those trees you were worried about? Well, we can uh, just about see them from here. Mm, I wonder what on earth it could be. You know, it's funny, David. I, I never thought I'd be sentimental about a piece of wood sticking out of the ground. But it, it gets you, sort of. Oh, there they are, Davy. See where? over there? Straight ahead, a little to the right. Yeah. Those are oaks, aren't they? Yeah, those are oaks. You see that stuff sort of hanging on the branches? That'll oh. choke them to death, won't it? <laughs> David, darling, don't you see what I mean? Yes, I I see what you mean, I think. Oh, now, darling, please don't take it so to heart. Please don't don't laugh to cover up the way you feel. I don't think it's silly of a man to feel about a tree. I, I wouldn't have married you if you hadn't. Claudia, are you serious? Of course I'm serious. It's a serious thing. These are your parasites? David, you're making the funniest faces. I, I, I don't think you realize how I important realize this I realize I married a little clug of a city girl. Oh, I knew you'd start calling me names, but that that's all right, darling. Don't Why is it all right? Because I love you. Well, then come over here. David, what are you going to do? I'm going to prove to you that in spite of your being an ignoramus, I, I love you, too. So nice being an ignoramus when you kiss me like that. David, what about the parasites on the oaks? Do you think that... think I'd kiss you like that under parasites, Mrs. Norton? Well, I... I you have just been kissed under mistletoe. Do you mean to... Do, do you mean to say it grows <laughs> on trees? I mean to say mistletoe, and it sometimes grows on trees this far north. Is that, that really all it is? Is that all? What more do you want? Oh, nothing. Except we're still standing under the mistletoe, darling, and... You know, mistletoe is... Office store and factory workers have learned the importance of working refreshed. Your hours and duties at home are often just as strenuous. Why not follow their example? Relax occasionally and have a Coke. The pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola is a little minute that provides a great big rest. Mr. King, have you seen Claudia and David? They went out for a short walk. Oh, you'll uh, find them hand in hand, walking under the mistletoe. The mistletoe? Hanging from the oaks down by the brook. Mistletoe hanging from the oaks, so that's what it was. That's what that was. How relieved Claudia must have been. She was so worried David would be upset. Why, she cared more about that than for the trees. Well, she's known David longer than the trees, you know. I guess that's it. I guess there's no use worrying about Claudia anymore, either. Well, she can take care of herself and uh, David, too. Exactly what I think. So on Monday, I think I'll suggest to David that I go back to New York. Wish you wouldn't. But I must. This isn't my marriage. It's Claudia and David's. I'll see you Monday, Joe. All right, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.